John Heyman, Hannah Kaiser is here. Those are former Mets. Those are former. That's money just going out. That's like I don't know, it, like it, interest on a loan, John. <laughs> you know, on your on your your 50-year oh. mortgage. It's like wow, pay, that, that's not going anywhere. It's nobody out there. Give me your thoughts. Oh well, they can afford it. I think they had two choices really, which was to play it out with a 15% chance to make the playoffs, as Fangraph said, and that's. Probably what I would have done since they were already in for close to half a billion you would have dollars. You would have I would have stayed and gone with the other choice, which to me was not a choice, which was be to trade the guys who are about to be free agents, which is Robertson, mm -hmm. Pham, and Canna. You, you wouldn't get much back. You're giving up a season for a couple of prospects who are not top, top prospects. So I don't think that was a real choice. Their two choices were to play it out, which I would have done because, let's face it, the Mets – blew a seven-game lead with 17 to go famously in 2007. Why couldn't they make up seven games with 60 to go? It was possible. But the other choice that I think was possible is this one where they really just reset. And right now they're getting a lot of admiration around the league for being able, willing to admit that you're wrong and being able to get decent prospects back. Now, of course, they were able to get decent prospects back because they're paying for most of the contract of right. Scherzer and Verlander. I do think they did do one of the two right choices, and they they were bold. And, um, you know, I would have criticized them if they just traded Robertson for a couple of 18-year-olds, right. which is what they did. Either in or you're out. In or out. But you, in but or out, you, so you they're out. Stayed in. Okay, where were you? Well, that's the thing. So uh, the Mets are an interesting case because it's like often when we are criticizing teams, it's because we think they have um, – some motive other than winning as quickly as possible. And that's clearly not the case with the Mets. They want to win as quickly as possible. They wanted to win last year. They wanted to win this year. They wanted to win a World Series in three to five years after buying the team for Steve Cohen. So they think this is the right path. I mean, BK, you said it yourself in the essay. They tried to rush, and it didn't work. This is the opposite of trying to rush. I mean, Billy Epler had, when he talked to the media, he was sort of, oh, re seeming all this business speak, we're reinvesting, reallocating. And I, I understand, right, yeah. I understand that why <laughs> I that could, sort of, that sounds silly, but it's true. They, yeah, sure. right, if you're, if it's not, if it's not going to be now, and you don't think it's going to be next year, then you do have to find a way to make that money work for you in the future. And they didn't have a great farm system before. This is why they, the guys they were able to go out and get are so like prominent within their farm system already. And the other thing is there wasn't a lot happening at this deadline in general. The Mets, like like you said, John, like they could have stayed. They they weren't that far out of it, but they clearly read the room that not a lot of people were selling yeah. and so maybe that makes it a better opportunity Seller's market, to right. sell. Also wait, you wrote I remember in one of your columns you wrote like that it's like it, that's you might think that if you're not watching the club but if you're watching right. the Mets you know like that's not yeah, happening. Yeah. like read, the, the read much too carefully. No no no, no you were right. I, I gave you credit for that. No, whatever it was they're they're um Yeah they looked they, worse. Right. They're, they're, they're their percentage. fighting spirit just never generated they, for more than 4 days. Right. You know, it they didn't did look worse. I just didn't think that the idea of just trading Robertson Canna and fam was worth giving up the season for such as it was I mean the season didn't look good their chances weren't good 15% yeah. isn't good let's say I witnessed it I thought it was not even 15% I still might have gone for it but not <laughs> take you, them don't right. take the middle road and they obviously don't right, no. take the middle right. road That's so it. I you know you're the riverboat gambler I like my odds are 8% let it roll baby I am surprised <laughs> that they are already saying like 2024, not going to happen for us, and maybe 2025. Well, no, but that was Max Scherzer's interpretation yeah, of know. the conversation, and they were trying to get him out. Uh, if that's Like, hey, we're not going to win next year either, big guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like, of course we're going to try to win next year. Because I do think, right, I do think, like, we've seen much worse teams turn it around quicker, and if you're willing yeah. to spend again, yeah. you yeah. can turn it around. Let's bring in Bob Costas. Bob, what do you make of this again? When, the Mets, when they made a decision, they oh. got out. Your thoughts on them? Well, a couple of things. Not only to Jason Stark's point about uh, the Mets having more in dead money than many teams' entire payroll, they were also already paying more in luxury tax than some teams' entire payrolls. Mm. The payoff here is going to be, did they hit it on most, if not all, of these prospects? I've referred to this a couple of times this week. The Dan O'Dowd revelation, if that's what we want to call it, a few days ago. We're talking about not every prospect, not the prize prospects that some teams hold on to, but he went back several years and looked at all the, quote, prospects involved in trades. And very few of them turned out to be really star players. 
Less than yeah. half of them turned out to be even significant major leaguers, and the majority of them either were inconsequential or never played in the major leagues. Now, in this case, the Mets clearly believe they're getting a lot of value back in terms of prospects, but they better hit on an abnormally high percentage when it comes to these prospects that are listed here. Yeah, no, Bob, I've heard that all day, you know, where it's like, well, they got the number one and the number two pro I'm like, yeah. you're, you're, you're rolling the dice. You have no idea. Like, of the course. shooting percentage for these guys. And a lot of these guys, it's one thing if you're like Christian Encarnacion Strand of the Reds, who, if you look at his numbers, he just got brought up. A guy who kills it at every level from college on up and then high A, double A, triple A. That's a little different. I don't see it with this guy. I know the one guy is... is Acuna's brother. I like yes. that part of it. He looks explosive. Uh, a shorter version of Ronald Acuna. But right, you, you don't know. And it's $156 million of dead money, Bob. I'm, I think Steve Cohen yeah. is going to look at that and go, this is not how I do business, people. <laughs> yeah, they, be, they better hope that Acuna is closer to Ronald Acuna than Tommy Aaron was to another great brave <laughs> Hank Aaron. <laughs> you know, the bloodline is one thing. Yeah. I want to see the stat sheet. 